What does Pythagoras have to do with pandemics? It turns out, quite a bit. Recently, you've been hearing a lot of talk about social distancing, and you've probably been seeing signs like these, encouraging us to stay six feet away from each other to prevent the spread of COVID-19. That's good advice, but there's something wrong with the sign. Let's take a closer look. If you have four individuals arranged in the shape of a square, let's call them person A, B, C, and D forming a square. And if we insist that, that those in opposite corners stay six feet away from each other, so in particular A and D are six feet away from each other. Well, let's notice what happens. We get a right triangle between people A, C, and D. Now, if we want to figure out what is the distance between person A and C, which would be the same as the distance between person C and D, since this is a square, we could call that distance x. And then we could remember what Pythagoras taught us. Pythagoras teaches us in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. That is, your x squared plus your x squared is equal to 6 squared, or 36. Simplifying, you get 2x squared is 36, or x squared is 36 divided by 2. Taking the square root of both sides, we see that x is equal to the square root of 36, 6, divided by the square root of 2. A and C are not 6 feet away from each other. They're only 6 feet divided by the square root of 2, which is about 4.24 feet away from each other. It turns out that a little bit of geometry can help us social distance even better. That's the problem I want you to think about. How can we use geometry to think about problems involving social distancing? Well, one way is we can imagine that if we want to avoid coming within six feet of other people, we can imagine that each one of, each one of us has around us a, a circle, an imaginary circle, consider that your personal space, when now the radius of your circle is going to be three feet. And everyone else, they have around them also an imaginary circle with radius three feet as well. Hence that any time, as long as your circles don't overlap, as long as you, you avoid your circles from intersecting with each other, you'll maintain at least six feet between you. Okay, let's take this vision of each of us having a circle around us, and let's begin thinking about how, how that can help us think about social distancing. One problem I recently ran into is thinking about how can I design my classroom so that it can be social distance friendly, so that everyone can maintain their personal space and not intersect anyone else's personal space. <laughs> In particular, I wanted to know how big of a classroom would I need for all of my students to preserve their entire circle without intersecting anyone else's. For example, if, if I'm going to have two students, well, well, you might think I need one student to have, to have his circle and another student to have her circle. So, so I need a classroom that is at least six feet across. But it turns out or no, six feet for this student and six feet for the other student. So, so, so the, this, this, this radius is three feet, but that means the entire diameter is six. So adding those six feet, you might think I need a classroom that is 12 feet across. But it turns out that's not the case. If my classroom is a square, then rather than having the students stand side by side, I can have them stand in opposite corners, each having their entire circle intact, not intersecting anyone else or not even intersecting any of the walls. So, so here we go. There are my two circles. And, and then what I can do is I can calculate how large this classroom needs to be. Well, let's think about it. Here's the center of this circle. Here's the center of this circle. It is true that coming over, I have a distance of three. And coming over here, I have a distance of three. But wait, what is, 
What is going on here in the middle? What is going on here in the middle? If I take a closer look, let's zoom in on that corner of that circle. So here I have my circle and I want to zoom in on this portion right here. And, and notice if I want to figure out how far across this section is, how far across this section is, well, I can look at half of it and I can ask how far across is this half of it? How far across is this distance? It's going to be less than three. How far is it? Let's find out. This length was three. So, so what would this other length be? Well, this is a very similar triangle to as we had before. And, and we saw that when you have this 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, there's a factor of the square root of two. That is the ratio between the, the hypotenuse and the short leg. In particular here, if my hypotenuse is three, then this short leg would be distance three divided by the square root of two. Just as how in this example, my hypotenuse was six, it came out that the short leg was six divided by the square root of two. So then this total distance across would just be two copies of that. Here it's six, a three divided by the square root of two, and here it's another three divided by the square root of two. So between those, I get two copies of three divided by the square root of two. Let's add this all up. My three plus three gives me six plus two times the square root of uh, uh, three divided by the square root of two, which is equal to six plus the two and the square root of two simplify to just three times the square root of two or about 10.24 feet. So it turns out in a classroom, I can fit two students who both have their entire circles avoid overlapping if the classroom is a 10.24 foot classroom by 10.24 foot classroom. Okay, well how large of a classroom am I going to need if I want to have three students or four students or five students or 10 students in the classroom? Those are some questions I want you to begin thinking about. You'll need to use some geometry. You'll need some Pythagoras and maybe some more geometry too to begin figuring out the mathematics of social distancing. Good luck.